series allows both close reading, so really minute readings of a specific text that's only in one edition, or it can allow distant reading, where we can read a hundred thousand copies of something, a hundred thousand different versions of Hamlet at once, in every language, and see how, how the words change. It is important to realize that in no sense is distant reading ever meant to replace close reading, um, but rather it is something that we can sort of do on top of uh, the process of close reading that will, will sort of greater inform the uh, conclusions that we're able to draw out, the interesting findings that we're able to pull out. Computers can help us find patterns in Shakespeare that we might not have noticed otherwise. For instance, we have a shorthand when we think about Shakespeare's plays, and spoiler alert, I don't know if we can say that for how they end, um, that if they're comedies, they're going to end in marriage, if they're tragedies, they're going to end with a lot of people dead. Um, but what we can find by using computers and text analysis is that there are actually linguistic differences between the generic endings as well, and so that the words that Shakespeare tends to use together in the comedies and the words that he tends to use together in the tragedies and the histories, that those are priming us for the endings that we'll see. And so the nice thing about using computers is that it shows these patterns that we might not have expected. They can also point out the outliers within Shakespeare's own corpus. So for instance, Othello, for much of the text, reads like a comedy, at least linguistically but yet it has the, the tragic ending. And so in some ways, is it, is it more tragic that we're being primed early on to think of it as a comedy? And this is a pattern that you know, some really astute readers are able to see on their own, but that it helps sort of from the broader view of using computers to study the text all at once to see that. So this is a technique that someone has built that uh, takes words and puts them into different bins or buckets or categories based on how they're being used. Um, that can range from these words are positive and these are negative to these much more specific things, first person, second person, emotional words. Um, once we have all these words sort of split up into the different categories, we can put the, the counts of all of these categories into a large number of uh, statistical tools that will be able to use those counts to tell us things as fundamental as uh, what genre a play might be in, or potentially who wrote a particular document or something along these lines. What's possible in a given world is defined by the genre. So if you're in a tragedy, right, you know that certain things are going to happen to certain people and you're going to have a certain um, expectation that that's happening. Without returning back to the individual passages, it all sort of feels a little bit meaningless. For instance, it's very easy for us to um, build a computer program that is able to, just by reading a document, tell the difference, um, be able to tell whether or not it's a comedy or a tragedy. But so could a human just going through and reading the document. The human would be able to go through and say, yeah, you know, they all died at the end, it's a tragedy. Ah, they all got married, it's a comedy. Um, one of the interesting things about being able to build a computer program that does that is that we can then go back and query the program about what in particular it's catching on to that tells it this document is a comedy, this document is a tragedy, because it very well might be something different than the human might have caught on to. When we set out to make the digital editions, we wanted to make the most highly annotatable literary text in the world. And what that means is that with this particular edition, you might not see it on screen because we've taught the uh, web interface to display it as if it were a page on the Folger editions, the paper one that you may have used in high school. But what's underneath it is the play in a form that is so deeply encoded, you can address a single line, a single word, you can say, show me all the things that Hamlet hears when he's on stage. And we want to be able to do that because we want to create, uh, let's say it's an addressable text. You can address it down to the single word or line, and then there's a stable URL in, uh, in you know, the 
digital ether sphere, which you can always count on to be there. And that's really important because if you want to attach something to Bodkin, Bear Bodkin, a picture of a dagger, you actually need a, a, a peg to hang that picture on. All the pegs have to be stable. And you really want a peg for just about everything in the plays. So that's the deep motive there, is we wanted to create the most deeply encoded literary text. We wanted to give it away, and then we wanted to see how people could start to attach things, or how they could jump into the text uh, online. When you're teaching, you can say, go here, and then you get the line, and you get above it and below it. So that capacity to display it, and to get to the point you want to get to, but also to annotate it, is really important to us. And in the long run, we expect readers and students and scholars to all have the opportunity to create an annotated version of the plays that they can use and develop, but also that they could share. And to do that, you need this system of digital hooks. They're invisible if you're using the Folger editions, but they're there.